This hearing uh, will come to order at this time. Today we're going to meet to assess the threat. I'll just ask uh, all members to take their, their seats at this time. Today we're going to discuss the, uh, the threat from Al-Shabaab, which is Al-Qaeda's franchise in the Horn of Africa. We're going to discuss the threat that it poses to Somalia, uh, the threat to the Horn of Africa, to the region, and the threat that it poses to the West, including the United States. Al-Shabaab translates to the youth, and that organization officially swore allegiance, if you'll recall, last year uh, in February to, um, to Al-Qaeda, but the leadership for many years of Al-Shabaab had been working closely with Osama bin Laden, uh, and um, as a consequence, the roots there are very deep. Al-Shabaab has been primarily focused in the past on attacking the young Somali government because the focus on Al-Shabaab was establishment of a very extreme form of sh Sharia in, uh, in Somalia. And they continued their attacks on African peacekeepers that came into that region uh, that were working to secure that country. But this is changing. This is evolving. And the dramatic attack on September 21st on the Westgate shopping mall in Nairobi, Kenya, demonstrates al-Shabaab's ability and demonstrates their desire to threaten civilians throughout East Africa. And in this plot, you had uh, 70 killed. You had over 200 injured. It's very common knowledge. If you're going to attack a mall, most, most of the adults in a, in a mall over 70 percent are usually female, and many of them are going to have children with them. So this, this planned attack obviously was focused on maximizing the psychological damage. Uh, several Americans also were, were um, wounded there, as you might know. And this is not the first time that this group has carried out this type of deadly attack in the region. If you recall the attack in Uganda, July uh, 2010, there were a series of bombings against civilians watching the first World Cup match in Kampala, Uganda. Uh, 74 were killed there by Al-Shabaab, uh, many more injured, including, by the way, one American killed there. Today, we are joined by the FBI agent who led the Bureau's investigation into that deadly Al-Shabaab attack in Uganda. Uh, last year, about a quarter of Al-Shabaab's attacks took place in Kenya, so that's a significant increase. Uh, for al-Shabaab, these attacks are retribution for a neighboring country's contribution of troops to the UN-authorized African Union peacekeeping mission in Somalia. This keep peacekeeping effort, which has made great strides, has been strongly backed by the United States, by the African Union, by the European Union. Of considerable concern, Al-Shabaab has demonstrated a unique ability to recruit young members of the Somali diaspora community in Europe and in the United States and convince them to travel to Somalia, convince them to join the fight. U.S. Africa Command suggests that these foreign fighters, in their words, remain the greatest threat to Western interests regionally and internationally. One witness today called the United States a, quote, primary exporter of Western fighters to the Al-Qaeda-affiliated group. Indeed, one of the first Americans to become a suicide bomber carried out his attack in Somalia. Online videos that are shown here in the United States and are shown in the West, shown in, in Britain, promise potential recruits a, gram a glamorous new life. And we'll hear today about one effort in the Somali-American community to counter such propaganda and recruitment. Needless to say, we need to be on top of this Al-Qaeda-aligned group's reach into the U.S. Al-Qaeda leadership recently encouraged sympathizers in the United States to carry out smaller but still deadly attacks as individuals or in teams of two or three and such strikes on U.S. soil could be similar to the one Al-Shabaab launched. 
Al-Qaeda elements have proven their ability to inspire and to train attackers, and they've done this primarily over the Internet, as demonstrated by the Boston Marathon bombers and the Fort Hood shooter two years ago when Dr. Jones first appeared uh, before this terrorism uh, subcommittee that I chaired at the time to discuss the future of al-Qaeda. We discussed al-Shabaab, and at that time, the head of Britain's MI5 was warning that, in his words, it's only a matter of time before we see terrorism on our streets inspired by those who are today fighting alongside al-Shabaab. That was the British view at the time. Given our support for the African peacekeeping mission and the fact that the U.S. remains a top al-Qaeda target, we need to get ahead of al-Shabaab's efforts to radicalize vulnerable youth. And we need to do that before that statement applies to streets in the West. So I will now turn to our ranking member, Mr. Elliot Engel from New York, for his opening remarks.